Hi guys, Bruce here. Well, here's my next trade in. They're getting worse. Something's not right. It's got a heck of a bang when I started it. It does start actually. Uh, so it's an old Craftsman 3.5 horsepower Tecumseh. I don't think this one is old enough to be called an eager, but they call it a three in one. And right now the spark plug wire is falling off the uh, spark plug. So let's just fix that. We'll just do that right now. That's kind of fun and interesting, eh? You should hear this thing. But I really don't think it's a rod. I, I think if a rod was that bad, it be, should be gone already. Uh, Tecumseh's have really soft um, fly, uh, flywheel keys. I'm going to check that first. I brought it out here. Now let's just see if that knock went away. I'm a hopeful guy, right? Okay, that's a good shot. Still chugging away, eh? Okay. Doesn't sound healthy. So let's put it on the cart and and uh, we'll see what's next. Let's just get it up on the cart and uh, first thing I'm going to do is just check the flywheel key. It has oil. Obviously it has spark. Yeah, it was chat chattering away there while I was jacking up the uh, lawnmower. You know, I'm just going to check the plug first. Something's just telling me to do that. All right, my friends. Look at this. I took the wire off, and this just spun out in my hands. And it is an E3 which I'm not fond of. Let me just get a J19LM without the resistor. Just on the far chance uh, that it's just something weird. Well, I'm going to just, you know what I'm going to do? Well, this is sitting out here. Oh, and don't worry, whoever noticed, the, I do have the uh, air filter. It's right here. These are actually the ones that are kind of hard to come by, these guys, eh? So just back us up a little bit. Ooh, uh, I shouldn't move you when you're on the chair. I should ask you to get off the chair and then move it. So I'm going to just try something. There's no, there's no hammering. You can hear the spark hit the ground. So it's got a good coil. Now, where is this E3 plug versus our other plug? I don't think this plug's going to be any part of our problem, but although it does go a skosh deeper into the cylinder, this is hot. Whoo! So even unscrewed in. They run, you know? Okay, so there's a, a nice J19 and the E3, you see, goes a little deeper, right? Eh? And that's got about a 30 thousandths gap. I'm just going to throw this spark plug in. It's a, it's a, uh, what I call a go-to-hell move, you know? What the hell? We'll try a J19 LM spark plug. And we're going to Tighten up. There, that's not going to fall off. Now let's just give it a yank and see, see what kind of story it's got to tell us, eh? 
I'll give it a couple of squirts because you never know. I don't know, I got a good feeling about this. I, I don't have a bad feeling about it. <laughs> but it's just a feeling. I don't know, it could be something rattling the case, eh? So let's get... Ah, oh, Papa-san! Okay. So the handy guys, and I used to do this before I learned how to fix things properly. There's two uh, Robertson screws, my friends in the States. These are square screws, but these are wood screws. Eh? So we'll take them out. Oh, and they got little thread cutters in them. That's too bad. Oops, pardon me, I've got lots of those. But these ones, they have a thread cutter, like when you're putting on sheet metal on a roof or something like that. I'm just going to pull it carefully. Can you see me over here? Almost, eh? I set your officer staring at his face, my gosh. Oh yeah, and then we got the... Uh, <laughs> The bad lighting at the back. I, I've been scolded so many times over that, you have no idea. So I'm just going to pull on this now without the screws in there to see if the rewind is touching those screws. That's definitely not it. Okay, let's take this off. Come on, baby. Hey. Okay, guys. I have one screw, two screws. They're they're very strange. They're pointed and threaded right from the point. And there's two extra holes that aren't stripped just off to the side here. So I'm going to use them, even though it, it's, it pulls laterally this way. It's still better than having those uh, non-standard screws in there, right? I bet Gerald's coming by. I wanted to show him how this is knocking. See you later. Okay, we're back. So I took the rewind off, and I just Right here, tank's laying down here. I just took the cap off. It's just a three-quarter inch nut, and we're going to have a look at the. Uh, pardon me. We're going to have a look at the flywheel key on this bad boy, and I think that's our problem. Come with me. Now, if you really look, at first it looks fine. We'll get right in there. There. But if you look, the whole... Oh, so hard to do, eh? There we go. Hey, use your head, Bruce. We'll put it over here. So if you look right down in there, right where the, that po poker is, we'll get a little better light on it. It has pulled away from the uh, from the crankshaft, and it's just tilted, and it's out about three degrees if you actually look at the orientation from the flywheel key to the main part of the flywheel key. So I am going to take that off and take off the flywheel, put it back together again with a new flywheel key, and see if it recovers. 
I'm just going to give it a quick pull on here. And it might come, it might not. This flywheel itself looks like it's really been around the block, eh? But if, I'm going to give it a little tug with my puller, and if that doesn't take it off, uh, I'll heat it up. I got people coming in to pick up a, or to look at a mower, so I might have to interrupt this activity. Where's it hitting? Well, it is hitting on the post, so I'm going to just uh, tighten that up a little bit. We'll use that as our lever point. <laughs> that always surprises me when that happens. Now we're going to get the flywheel key out of there and see if it's deformed at all. See, if you look at it, it's almost pulled out. It, and there is a, right there, there's a line where it used to be sitting flush. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, oh, the timing can't be out that much to make it knock. But it is. I will be very surprised if this is not the problem. No, this might not even be damaged. Oh, it is a bit. It's been ouched. So I'll just get a new one and we'll be right back. So there's a brand new Tecumseh key in there. And you'll see that there's a little less distance between this and the old one. Won't this be interesting to see if it actually fixes our issue? Light. Oh yeah, that just nestles down in there like it used to. So. Nut. I think that'll do just fine. Upside down Bellevue washer. A Bellevue washer is a washer that is just slightly cupped this way. There's been some discussion on that recently. I get on a forum with some friends from everywhere and they help me out. They let me know when I'm doing right and they let me know when I'm not. They're great people. Okay, let's get the uh, rabbit gun. And we're going to torque this to exactly who the is about a pound. Regap the coil. This is a Briggs and Stratton coil gapper, but the distance between the coil and the magnets is no different. Gap, 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 gap. They call me the gapper. backwards to see if we have any compression. Oh yeah. And now we put it back together again. Just like that. I'm gonna blow some crap out of it.
back on this old beater, I got the gap set. The flywheel has now got the new flywheel key. There we go. We need two 5 16 bolts and two 3 8 bolts. Put the 5 16 in first. Whoop. Direction. And then we'll do the 3 8 the same way with a bigger tool. here and across there. He used self-tapping screws. There they are. Quarter inch driver, pardon me. Now we're going to try and pull it and see if it, if it likes me. It really likes me. Remember that? Academy Awards years ago. Okay, so if we got a running machine with no knocking, we're going to come out of here a rocket. Okay, we're going to lower this a little bit so nobody gets hurt. Nobody moves, nobody gets hurt. Pull you guys back, lower you down. Pull this. No, we're waiting. Oh, spark luck. Ah, uh, Mick, I got it. Okay. So now we're going to see if it has a knock. Still does. <laughs> oh, well. What is causing that knock? It does not sound like a raw to me. So now I'm going to scrape the broccoli out from underneath. It might be something like that. But it needed the new key, right? Broccoli and bend a bit of tin here and see if that helps. Okay, so what I see here, right here is there's a piece of tin that's coming devilishly close to getting whacked. Look at that, that is ridiculously close. That's the break you hear squeaking. So now we're just going to clear up the, the schmoo. Sounds better to me, but who knows? Alright, I'm going to turn you off and get this table cleaned off. Well, 
Well, it still doesn't run like a firecracker, but now that I've cleaned it up, and I did let it run for five minutes, and the oil could be full of gasoline running really, really thin. So I think it does need an oil change. And uh, it needs a real alignment too. So let's not worry about that unless it, until it's going down the road. So I'll just show you. I did spray some uh, ant uh, some carb spray on the back over here, and I got some sputtering. But don't forget the throttle shaft is right on top there. But I'm going to tighten up the intake manifold bolts and see if that helps me. Three eighths and seven sixteenths, eh? and the big Phillips screwdriver for the intake bolts. You just never know, eh? Hotter than a pistol now, I gotta be careful. Hotter than a two dollar pistol. Okay, and we're gonna just. I don't know if I can get to the other side, but we'll take this side up. Oh, yeah, they're loose. Look at that. That's interesting. Could be why it's running lean. Holy moly, baby, can I get to that? I don't know if I can or not. I wonder if that's going to help. Muffler. I might try and change that out as I'm at it. Okay, so I think an oil change is, is coming. Oh, let's look at the fuel. Ah, it came with fuel in it and it started. That's a miracle in itself, right? Okay, here we go. Fuel. Oh, it's clean. It's got a bit of dirt in it. But I tell you, right now, fuel is worth saving. So I'm going to get my big wide tray, not the cleanest one, and dump that fuel out. I know it's hot, as long as I don't burn myself, right? Okay, my friends, it's got clean gas. I put the muffler, I put a different muffler on it, sharpen the blade. Just hardly needed any at all. Doesn't rattle anymore. And let's just see if we can get a little start. Five pushes? What do you think? somewhere. No rattle, uh, running a little slow, uh, and the new muffler makes quite a difference. I just had another one of these canned mufflers, but it blows away from your face, not just out into oblivion. So I'm going to just, uh, this wheel is just a little bit off. I, 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 yeah, it's that easily adjustable. She's an oldie, eh? So let's just adjust that RPMs now. Well, I'd like to find out what they are. Nah. Hey, it runs good, eh?
120. Right, so the more work, the, the, the worse they are, the more work you put into them, the less they're worth. <laughs> so anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, you know, it was a, it was a tough one. Uh, the wheel alignment was by Armstrong method, and uh, the uh, flywheel key was a bit sheared, not totally, and uh, that helped a lot. And I ran it for five minutes and the knock went away. But it could be part of the timing issue. It could be settling in, you know, a nice oil change. The oil, the old oil could have been as thin as gas. Who knows, right? I just dumped it into my five-gallon waste pail. So there we go. Got another one done. Thank goodness. Talk to you guys later.